congratulations. Um, in May, could you have imagined this happening that you'd make it to the final 53? Um, me, I imagined it. <laughs> I did imagine it. Like it was, you know, like manifested it. That's why I call it more of a manifestation. Uh, just always thinking, pushing, working. Can so, you just, can you take us through what what's been like for you yet, since you hadn't played since 2016, and now you're on an NFL team? What's it, what's that like? Um, mostly it's just getting my body back. Um, to used to playing football every day. So that's been like the biggest obstacle so far. Um, body starting to feel, get used to being out here running, hitting, and doing everything, all the stuff that come with football. And then when did you get the hunger again to, to play? Oh. Or did you never lose it? Um, I say my real hunger when my situation became what my situation was. And actually while I was behind in jail, it gave me a lot of time to think about what I wanted to do in life and where my life was heading. So that really gave me like the motivation to push to try to fight back to get back what I lost. I mean, when, I mean, when you're in jail, do you think you're ever gonna play football again? Um, me, yeah, that's what I was telling all my, um, everybody I was in there with, like that's what I'm working towards. Like when I get out, that's, I'm going back to try to play football. Malik, did you have a choice of teams to sign? And if so, um, did you end up No, I, I, I don't know. This, um, Cleveland was the first team to, Brought me out, um, brought me down here, got me looked at medically and everything, cleared me for football. They was the first to do it, and that's all I had at the time, and they, they brought me in. And, so. and then who did you speak to first? Was it, was it uh, Andrew Berry? Or, yep, or A.B. I assume you talked quite a bit to Stefanski, too? Oh, uh, yep. How you, what, was your, uh, what was your pitch to him? Pitch to who? To Andrew and Kevin, about um, why you would be a, a good fit for Really, just I um, showed him that, that I had that hunger, really. I told him how much I wanted it and how much I wouldn't let him down, like giving me this opportunity. You know, I didn't have chance after chance and giving me this being my last chance and everything. Y'all give me this opportunity. I won't make you look bad, A.B. in particularly, giving me this opportunity, bringing me in here, Rick sticking his neck out for me and everything. So definitely don't want to let nobody down. So, yeah, that's my driving force for sure. Hey Malik, you're obviously you've been living in the moment and looking toward the future, but you, you also look back at the past and, and those missteps. I mean, are there kind of daily reminders that, that bring you back to that? Um, me, I know what my life could be with without football and the stuff I fell into without playing football. And I just wanted to get some more structure back in my life. I didn't have no structure in my life around that time. So my driving force really is like just where where I was at. Like I'm, I'm in the best place I could be right now. So. That's really my driving force. So, uh, Coach Stefanski just said that you understand what's at stake. So, what is at stake? Is Everything for me, my career is at stake. My livelihood, taking care of my family, the chance to take care of my family, just to do what the everyday person can't do go out there in front of thousands of fans and play a game and get paid lots of money to do it. That's that's a lot of people's dream, and I, I get to live my dream. Is, is there somebody that like helped you or that you leaned on while you were going through all this? Oh, my mom. My mom, literally. That's really probably the, my driving force to even really, when I didn't believe in myself, she was still believing in me. And she every day she told me, you're going to play football one day again, even when I didn't believe her, because I'm going through all my situations. She saw past everything I was going through going through and she know me the best so that's my real driving force she was the one that pushed me the most what's, what's your mom's name joy joy crow is she here a lot your training oh uh, no nah, she's back at home or she live in name does she live in joy? yep she in detroit i'm sorry in detroit or could you spell her name for us um joya j-o-y-a um crow c-r-o-w-e as far as a football player at home do you think you're a better football player than you were at Michigan State, even though you're Oh, better than when I was at Michigan State. I ain't using my hands at Michigan State. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm a lot better in that situation. I definitely think I'm a better player than what I was, but not better than what I could be or where I should be. So that's where I'm working towards, just trying to get back to where I should be at this point right now and just trying to stuff five years of missing the game, trying to stuff that into one year and getting back to playing good football. So, so what's it like? You're, you're uh, stepping into a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. I mean, mm. How cool is that for you? Uh, it's fun. Uh, it would be real nice to come back first year and win the Super Bowl. So, yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a nice little – that's a, a good bonus. Wait, hey, what, what point do you 
point did you feel like you were back when we watched the preseason games? We could see your physicality up front and the push that you were getting up front. So at what point did you feel like I don't, I'm back to the player that I know I can be? I don't feel like I'm back all the way in my book. Like I still uh, feel like it's a lot of stuff I can work on. Uh, but I'm starting to get the get the a little bit of it back, like the just the being comfortable. That's really what I'm working on, being comfortable out there again, like realizing that I'm really I'm really out here. So that's really the biggest thing. But once I get to where I'm playing and I'm not thinking as much as I'm thinking right now, that's where I really feel like my game and accept. Well, what does it mean to you, Malik, when um, I know as part of like your sentencing, you had to do you had to apologize to a lot of people. You're writing some essays for the judge, et cetera. What did it mean then, though, for, for people to want to give you a second chance? How meaningful was that? in terms of helping you to get to here? Um, everybody don't get a second chance. So that was just meaningful that the NFL and anybody is willing to give me, of all people, another chance. It's, that's just a blessing right there. But um, it's real meaningful. Um, I had to, I really feel like that time helped me out a lot because I wasn't in the best head space at the time. And it really gave me time to talk to therapists and do what I needed to do to talk to people and just get my mindset back to where it needed to be. What, what did you, it's a complicated question, but like what, what were your essays? Like what were the topics? Um, I forget, um, I forget like one was about the, declar the importance of the Declaration of Independence. Another one was like, what can I do to be a good citizen and stuff of that caliber type stuff. You seem open to talk about your experience. So yeah. It could be inspiration to others. What was the lowest point? Um, the lowest point was just always um, the call, the f getting in trouble in the first call I made, making to your mom you in jail and everything, and you got to tell her like, oh, I didn't got in trouble again, and just happened to tell her come buy me out and all stuff. That was when I hit my lows. Just disappointing my mom was the biggest lows for me. Like I disappointed myself a lot, but just hurting her because she was the only one that really stuck by stuck by my side, and I put her through some unnecessary pain. So that was like the the biggest like let down and me just letting her down. What do you, what do you think was the, the key to turning your life around? Um, um, focus, like my mom and focus, like literally, and just wanting to change. Like you get, everybody around me wanted me to change, but I didn't want to change at the time. So just um, actually working towards Doing what you instead of just saying you're gonna do something, actually working towards it and doing what you got to do, even when it, it's like, cause it was a long while. I was working out for a while before I got picked up, and so just working through, just you ain't getting no calls or you, you ain't you ain't feeling, you ain't feeling like working out that day, and you still got to go in there and all type of stuff like that. That's that's so bad. When you were in prison, do you do you have? I mean, some of your prison mates, I'm guessing, probably didn't have this attitude you have. How did you? A lot of them did, cause um, a lot of them pushed me too. Um, they good. They ain't, everybody ain't a bad guy in there. A lot of them, you know, they hear my story, so they gave me a lot of inspirational words and just telling me like, yeah, go out there, pushing, like, giving me motivational words to get out there and do what's right. I shouldn't be in there with them right then. They shouldn't be in there either. But still, I definitely shouldn't have been in there. And they just gave me motivational words type of deal. Do you think he could play end in the NFL? Oh, maybe I'll drop a couple pounds, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we take one more, Nate? The accident. How much does that contribute to everything that followed? Um, oh, say it again. The, the ATV accident. What about it? How much did that, did that contribute to every? Did that put you in a bad place? Did that contribute to everything um, that followed? Not that that's uh, a, a lot of stuff, accident. just. Um, a lot of stuff drove me to what what I had going on. Um, the accident was the biggest part about it, cause um, you know you going to the doctor, certain doctors telling you you can't play again. That's where I lost my faith, and I shouldn't have never lost my faith. Um, doctors telling me I'd never be able to play again, but I got doctors saying another thing. And you go to a team, and they they doctors say the same thing. You go to another team, they doctors say the same thing. So that just trying to push through that at the time was a hard thing for me that was really I got down on myself a lot around that time just really knowing like I might not ever be able to play football again but God bless me you know and I'm back here so what happened on that what, on that accident did you what what, what happened in the accident um I crashed uh, I mean did your arm legs or what, what? Uh, I had a uh, head injury